This episode is brought to you by Wear Buff, your go-to for Buffalo-inspired apparel. Get your hands on stylish t-shirts, hoodies, and more at wearbuff.com. That's W-E-A-R-B-U-F dot com. And make sure you use the promo code TWB at checkout for 10% off your first order. Stay Buffalo proud with Wear Buff. On today's episode of TWB, we will be starting our positional review series. We will begin our positional review series with the quarterback and running back room this week on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. And now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your host, Justin Goddard. Bills Mafia, welcome in and thank you for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fan Base Podcast Network. My name is Justin and I will be your host today and this show is sponsored by Wear Buff. Um, check it out. The links are directly on our website, wanderingbuffalo.com. Um, just links to some awesome merchandise, um, clothing, apparel, everything's Buffalo themed. Um, so make sure you're checking that out. Um Going to start our positional review series today, and to, we're going to be starting with um, the quarterback and the running back room. Just kind of get the ball rolling. Two really easy positional groups. Um, and this series is just kind of, it, it's, it comes from the 53-man projection that I've done. Um, so if you've missed either of those episodes, there's one for the defensive side of the ball, one for the offensive side of the ball. And this is just kind of looking back at, you know, who was on the team last year, um, what kind of production we were getting from them, um, players that are coming back, players that we may have lost. And the purpose of this for me is to kind of, I guess, kind of analyze the roster and most importantly, um, you know, what talent we lost from last year and what's coming in to replace that and going to kind of go room by room and give my opinion on whether this room is all set to go into the season. Um, if we need more, what that looks like, is there a path to improve that room or are we just kind of where we're at, um, going forward? Um, so starting out quarterback room is super easy. Um, it, it's really just Josh Allen. Um, Shane Bouchel, um, obviously returns, probably going to be a practice squad, squad guy again. Um, and obviously behind Josh Allen is Mitch Trubisky. Um, I'm not pulling up Mitch's stats from last year because it's, it's, I feel like it's kind of an anomaly. It doesn't really help us out. He had some starts in there. We're not expecting that. Um, this room is fueled by Josh Allen. Doesn't really, there's not really anybody you're going to put as his backup. That's going to, you know, do a tremendous job moving the needle for me. This team's going to go as Josh Allen goes. We've been fortunate to have great health from Josh Allen started all 17 games last year. Um, and this is, this is the guy that you know 90% of the league is looking for um if he goes down you're in trouble your whole offense is predicated around what he brings to the table you know maybe if it's you know three four games a guy like Trubisky can get you a win or two um kind of combined with a good defense and a run game um but this this quarterback room really ends starts and ends with Josh Allen for me um Last year, 385 completions on 579 attempts, good for 66.5%. Uh, 4,306 yards, 29 touchdowns to 18 interceptions passing, um, and then adds 111 carries for 524 yards and another 15 touchdowns. Um, what does this room look like going forward? Um, do we need any improvements um, I think if Josh Allen's kind of right along a similar stat line to that, you're having another great season. Um, 
a ton is made about Josh Allen's interceptions. I would I like to see them cut down a bit? Sure. Um, they also don't overly concern me. I think there's there's context to every turnover that when you're looking at the raw stats, you're not going to get that full context. And I know like the whole arm punt thing was thrown around a lot last year. Um, I think that gets overused. Some of them were kind of whatever, we're in a bad situation, toss it up. And if it ends up being a pick, it's a pick. Um, I think there's some in there that were really bad. There's some in there that you can live with. Um, As long as my quarterback is combining for 44 touchdowns, I can live with the 18 interceptions. Um, It seems to be a trend with Josh Allen that, you know, other quarterbacks that are in similar stratosphere, um, talent wise, turnover wise, all that. We don't talk about them as much. It's it's just a Josh Allen narrative. Um, I personally, I, I I don't really care about the turnovers. I think there's situations where you can clean it up. I also think that there's a certain level of gunslinger to Josh Allen that you know. It, you don't want to try to reel it in too much because part of what makes him so special is his ability to make these ridiculous off-script plays, and sometimes they go sideways, and it's a turnover. It, it is what it is. Um, I think we saw kind of at the beginning of last year uh, under Dorsey, you know, kind of this reeled-in version of Josh Allen, and, and, and what happened? We were all clamoring for set Josh free, let him run, let him throw. Uh, he just looks like he's just a football player. He He's not the the most cerebral quarterback out there. Not, not to say that he's not. Um, not to say that he's not good at it. Um, he's just not like that number one guy at like everything's perfectly processed. I, I think of like a Joe Burrow for that type of quarterback. Um, what makes him so special is, you know, his, his crazy outlandish style of play. Um, so like I said, we saw that kind of reeled in last year and we didn't like it. Um, he didn't look like he was having fun. He looked like he was overanalyzing. He looked like he was pressing and, you know, we saw the change of court coordinator, um, kind of a little bit of a philosophy shift and Josh Allen looked like Josh Allen again. He was on the sidelines, you know, going crazy, hyped up, uh, pounding his chest, all that type of stuff. And we didn't see that in the earlier stages of the year. Um, Now with Brady taking over as the full-time offensive coordinator and we see kind of the changes to the wide receiver room, I think there is going to be a lot put on Josh's shoulders of, you know, kind of processing defenses, making the right decisions, being a point guard, distributing the ball, all that type of stuff. And I think Josh has shown his ability to do that. And this year should be kind of like that point guard mentality and still do the off script stuff when you have to. Um, I think without the pressure of that, bona fide number one receiver that's got to get his 10 targets a game and just sort of moving through progressions and getting the ball into open space, letting these guys make plays um, with the ball in their hand. I think we're going to see a really special year for Josh Allen. Um, As far as the room going forward, um, looking to this season and beyond, I don't think I'm very confident that we don't see any changes to the room right now, barring injury. Uh, I think you go into the season with Trubisky as your number two. Um, Going beyond this year, I've been a huge proponent of it. I will continue to be. Um, I think you have the roster moving in a pretty good direction. Um, Stocked up on picks next year. I I would still love to see the Bills bring in a a mid-round quarterback with some tools that can kind of develop 
And, you know, maybe you get a situation where you invest a second, third round pick on a probably third and beyond, let's be honest, um, into a quarterback that develops into something and flashes in preseason. And, and now you got some trade bait um, for another team. Um, but I look at it as more of if, if we're only getting that Mitch Trubisky level of backup quarterback play anyways, and we don't expect that to, you know, be a real needle mover if he actually has to play. Give me a guy on a cheap, cost-controlled contract that can just be locked up for four or five years, um, not cost us much, that can be in the building, learn all the systems, train behind Josh Allen, and and have that be your backup going forward. Um, this is something that I've, I honestly has kind of been something I've talked about like since I've started this show. Um, still remains something that I'd like to see the Bills do, um, especially when when you're a team that's kind of spending up to the cap every year. Um, that that couple million dollars that you spend on a backup quarterback that you really don't want to come into the game anyways um, is, is just something I'd like to see. And as far as like, you know, somebody in the room, you know, breaking down film with Allen and holding a clipboard and talking about what he's seeing on the field and all that. I, at this point in Josh Allen's career and the level of quarterback play that he has, you know, being like a top five quarterback in the league, and I'm being generous with the top five, he's top two in my opinion. Um, I don't. I just don't think that he needs like that veteran voice in the room that's like, oh, see what you missed here, blah, blah, blah. He can sit down. He's going to see all that himself. Um, so give me somebody with some tools to back him up um, beyond this year, and I'd be pretty psyched with this room going forward. Uh, moving into the running back room, obviously some changes here. Uh, we do bring back James Cook, um, similar to Josh Allen, also... Um, played in all 17 games last year. We're just doing the regular season here, by the way. Um, 237 carries for 1,122 yards, two touchdowns on the ground, 44 receptions on 54 targets, 445 yards there with four touchdowns. Um, Latavius Murray played in 16 games, or 79 carries, 300 yards, four touchdowns. Added another 17 receptions on 22 targets for 119 yards. Ty Johnson played in 10 games with 30 carries for 132 yards. Seven catches on seven targets for 62 yards and a touchdown. Um, Damian Harris obviously kind of had his time in Buffalo cut short due to injury. He appeared in six games. Um, 23 carries for 94 yards and a touchdown with two catches on two targets for 16 yards. And then Leonard Fournette popped up for a little bit, um, appeared in two games, 12 carries and 40 yards. Um, and this is an interesting room to me. Um, obviously returning Ty Johnson and added Ray Davis in the draft. Um, and Cook returns as your primary ball carrier. carrier. Um, I think a lot is made about Cook and his receiving abilities um, just with some of the bad drops he had. And um, I'll, I'll go out there and say, yeah, you'd love to see some of those, you know, be completed and come back. Um, but him being a receiving back was kind of his bread and butter coming out of college. Um I think the drops that he had last year particularly stand out because they were really bad ones and like going for touchdowns and in key moments of games and like situationally. Yeah. I, I, I want to see that get cleaned up. Um, am I like in a panic mode that we need to add something to this room because we don't want him running routes? Absolutely not. Um, I think there's just a little bit to be cleaned up there. But when you look at the efficiency overall, like 44 or 54 in a vacuum, 
that that's great numbers to me. Um, 445 yards, you know, averaging about 10 yards per reception. I think those are great numbers and numbers that are easy to work with going forward. Um, like I said, the, the, the drops, the issues in the passing game for him really stand out more because of what the situations were. Um, very excited that Ty Johnson came back. I think he was kind of like not really in the plans last year to get any sort of significant playing time um, with the addition of Latavius Murray and Damian Harris. Um, but then there was, you know, the injury to Harris. Uh, Latavius Murray looked like he was kind of running out of gas by the end of the year. And you saw Ty Johnson start getting some work. And I remember going back to the Jets. I really liked Ty Johnson as a player. And I, I didn't like playing against him with the Jets. And he was always kind of buried behind depth. Um, he was somebody I was really excited to add. And then we didn't see much of him. Um, and then his very limited opportunities last year, he's averaging about four and a half yards a carry. Um, the one that really stands out to me is the efficiency in the passing game, albeit on very low numbers. It's only seven targets, um, but averaging, what, eight, nine yards a carry there and just catching everything that was thrown to him. Um, thought he was really good at getting downhill and just a very different style running back from Cook of just kind of that one plant and go. Um, so was really excited to see him brought back. And then the addition of Ray Davis, I think, kind of will add to j just the running back room as a whole in the run game and the pass game. Um, really excited to see what he brings to the table. But it, it's still a rookie that we haven't seen play. So I, I have that just kind of left as a question mark. Um, now, obviously losing some production with Murray, with Harris, or not, I'm not really going to lump in here. Um, but Latavius Murray was getting a decent amount of carries um, towards the beginning of the year. Um, and Damian Harris was kind of on a similar path, if we're being honest. And then obviously the injury knocks him out and, and we don't see him the rest of the year. Um as a whole, I'm very satisfied with this group going into next season. My my area that I think is still a pretty big question mark is just in pass protection. And we've seen that not be a strength of James Cook. Um, again, Ray Davis, I think he has the ability to do it, but we, we haven't seen it in NFL games yet, so that's still a question mark to me. And I think Ty Johnson is... Okay, um, it, there's just nobody in the room that is somebody that like I have full trust in for pass protection. Um, so I think that's the biggest area that can be improved. And honestly, for what it's worth, Latavius Murray was tremendous in in pass protection. And if if there was a scenario where they wanted to bring him back for like specifically that role, maybe get some carries, um, but just kind of be that go-to pass pro guy, I wouldn't hate it. And I think he kind of showed his age and wear and tear by the end of the season, but that was also being, you know, the number two ball carrier on this team and getting a lot of reps and being involved in the passing game. Um, I think on a like a limited snap count basis and just being brought in to be a specialized guy, I wouldn't hate that as an option. There's a lot of other options out there. Running backs are pretty easy to find. Um, but I think going into this season, that's that's an area where I'd be.